what is the most effective way to help your child who is a victim of bullying? I think the first thing is to actually take the distress seriously. And I don't mean believe it word for word, because children are not accurate reporters any more than we are. But I do believe that to say, oh, don't worry about it, just ignore it, is, is not a particularly useful and probably quite damaging form of intervention, or really, quite frankly, non-intervention. It's very hard to ignore that stuff. And so you end up internalizing it. So I think one of the things that would be very important for parents to do is ask questions. Where does this happen? How, how is it for you? Do you think about it at night before you go to bed? You know, not necessarily, I mean, those are somewhat leading questions, as the lawyers might suggest to me. But, um, but what you want to suggest to a child is that you are actually interested in that child's experience of the event. Then what are you going to do with the information? Then with that information, I think, the, again, this gets tricky at the age level, but you want to find a trusted adult in the school, um, and I underline trusted adult, who has some sense of how to operate with this information and get some advice from that person as to, number one, how to talk to the child and work on ways to uh, operate that would make them less likely to be targets, but at the same time, work with somebody in the school on how to how the school is going to approach that bully. Because one of the typical things that used to be done is you bring the bully and the target into the same room and you mediate something. Now, you got a gun, I don't have a gun, I'm going to agree with anything <laughs> you say, you know, because I'm down here. And my power is yeah. zero and your power is very high. So that stuff, I think, is gone. I think it would escalate the problem. Well, really. what it does is the bully, as you said very clearly, is that the bully is usually somebody who's very, very good with language, although guys aren't particularly good with that, but, um, but uh, very good with language. So, oh, I'm really, so I didn't realize that that hurt him. I promise that I won't do that again. Right, right. And all kinds of wonderful comments are made, and the meeting ends in a nice note, and on the way out, the kid says, I'll see you at recess. <laughs> You know, and, and then it gets back, you know, you tell them again and watch out. So I think that we're moving much further away from that, what I would consider a very dangerous form of intervention. Uh, but I think when I say find a trusted adult, I don't mean that the teachers aren't trustworthy. What I mean by that is someone who knows how to intervene without making it worse for the target. Yeah, exactly. That's the critical mm -hmm. part. What is being done in the school systems to stop bullying, Paula? Well, there's, pursuant to the legislation, there's a whole uh, anti-bullying policy in the schools that, that has any, everything from defining what the behavior is, coming up with age-appropriate curriculum to teach bullying in the schools, um, to reporting requirements, investigating and reporting requirements and the like. Um, local agreements with local law enforcement uh -huh. to deal with things that might cross over into that criminal line of action. So it is, it is very comprehensive in terms of what the plans are. And the plans are sort of living documents. They weren't just, you know, when the law came out and schools were required to submit the plans, I think it was December of 2010. That's when we did the, uh, that's when we did the conference, the initial conference. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they're have to, having to update and resubmit those plans all the time. So it's it's pretty comprehensive. Deb, are, are school systems doing a good job or at least a better job in handling bullying problems, or is there still a tremendous need for improvement in this area? I think there's still a, a tremendous need for improvement. I certainly, my kids are older now, but when my kids were in school, it was basically you know, that, you know, all kids are bullied and just suck it up. So, um, and that wasn't that many years ago, actually. But it I It wasn't that helpful either. <laughs> no, no, this was not helpful, and um, there was really no support in the school system except for a few counselors who would, you know, counsel the kids to, well, try to, try to get by the best you can, and, you know, no support. But I, I think the school systems now, in light of this law, are trying to uh, bolster, uh, you know, and trying to come up with ways of, of dealing with it. I do think parents need, as Rick said, need to take this very seriously. I, one of the things that we did as a mistake with our own children, you know, we tell them just to be tough, fight back, you know, be strong, 
you know, and, and don't let them take advantage of you. And that is absolutely the wrong thing to ever do because you need to validate their concerns and, um, and they can't necessarily fight back. There's maybe a whole group of people who are out after them. And uh, you ha have to take it to the school in some way or another and deal with it on that level. Are there any other things you would do differently now if you, um, with the experience that you have, you would do differently if you had a child that came to you and said, Mom, I'm being bullied? I was at the school almost every day for a long period of time, speaking with the principal and with the counselors, and um, it was totally ineffective. I would probably, if I, I didn't get results from the school system, I would take it to the police. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.